Well, there's another disc brake problem that's reared its ugly head. And this was highlighted on one of Cam Nichols' videos. And he'd got a Chinese brand with some Novatech wheels on it. And he was going to evaluate for that for the company. But uh, in the process of building this bike up and getting it all fine-tuned, a significant problem arose. So let's roll an intro and let's have a talk about what this problem really is. Now Cam Nichols, being the particular person he is, he didn't just take it out of the box and just bolt everything together and just ride the bike. He wanted to give the evaluation every opportunity to perform its best. So he took the bike and he took it to a mechanic that uh, I must admit, he seemed like he really knew his stuff. So um, probably a very experienced guy. And he started to go over the bike and he showed that some parts weren't greased up. Bearings just need a bit more grease. The seat needed some carbon paste and all those sorts of smaller things that just make the build, you know, just that little bit better and more smick. But when he was coming to tune the disc brakes, he found that he couldn't get them to stop rubbing. Caliper where it's mounted to the fork. Yeah. The faces of the fork itself are not square. That this rotor, like I said to you, that little brake rotor has a kick in it. So we're gonna have to sort that out in a moment. I'm gonna try and fix the um, caliper mounting area because it's not made very well. So I'm gonna have to face the fork. Okay. Um, the disc brake caliper mount is on the piss big time. So your brakes are rubbing yes. terribly. Yeah. Day two. The front brake though, now that we have a good square face, yes. notice straight away with the wheels that um, the hub bores have been, basically if you will, they've been drilled um, off centre. Wow. So the whole hub assembly uh, oscillates, so it goes up and down with movement. Uh, yeah, so in the flanges, so the I've actually changed the rotor to a really basic steel rotor, but this is nice and square, I've tested it on another wheel. Yes. Um, but as you actually spin the assembly, uh, we have a large amount of up and down movement in the flange. Right. And what that does is it actually produces a serious wobble within the rotor. Um, so you actually see the movement of the hub will go up and down. Now this is a Novatech hub, so it's obviously nothing to do with that Sava brand, but it's obviously what comes with the bicycle. Yes. So you've got to you know, take responsibility for that. So at the end of the day, that would be a pain in the bum for a normal person to build the bike out of a box. Um, could, because could you stop it from rubbing? No, it's impossible. At the moment, it's pretty much impossible. Now, after we couldn't adjust the disc brake, he did some further investigation, and on further investigation, he found that the actual hub, which was a Novatech, the bearings were not perfectly centered. So, if you look at exaggerated, the hub was going up and down, up and down like this. And of course, the disc brake is bolted to that hub, so it also was going up and down. And this is what was making it difficult for him to tune the brake so it wasn't rubbing. Now, we can argue that this is not the disc brake's problem, it's the combination of things not being within tolerance and that's why the brake didn't work. But the problem with all this is we do know that the bike industry does have a bit of an issue with making things to good tolerances. And that's why disc brakes are really not a great thing on bikes because the manufacturers can't get the tolerances good enough. And this was the same thing that happened with with uh, bottom brackets. They've gone back to fretted bottom brackets because they can't make the bottom brackets accurate enough with their, the, the way they manufacture the bikes to make them consistent so they can get rid of bottom bracket creak. So they've gone away from press fit cups and they've gone back to fretted bottom brackets. So in conclusion, the whole thing about these disc brakes is they're a lot more finicky. 
they have you've got to face the caliper mounts where they go on they need to be perfect if the manufacturer hasn't made those perfectly in line then it's going to give problems as well because the caliper is not straight and that's why the bike shops have to face those as well so it's all this extra work they have to do to get the disc brakes to work correctly and now we've also found that the hubs are not being made accurately enough so therefore that disc brake still doesn't work correctly as advertised by the manufacturers so you know we've got all these combination of things that can affect disc brakes and this is why I say hey they're not such a great thing because they're unreliable because and they're not unreliable because that system doesn't work they're unreliable because the manufacturers of all the different components which is the frame the hubs the wheel the calipers and all of the other stuff and the finish of the frame which is the facing of the surfaces where the calipers have got to go on they're just not made well enough to give you a consistent product where the disc brakes work as advertised consistently. And this is my big criticism with disc brakes because a rim brake is not even an issue. You know, if it's a little bit out in tolerance, it's still going to work. Even if the rim's not even true that well, it'll still work. But yeah, it does feel like you can feel some pulsing in the brakes, but it still works and it has a lot more tolerance to imperfections on the bike. Anyway guys, just wanted to raise that because I thought it was quite interesting on that video that Cam Nichols put out and I will leave a link to it up the top here so go check that out because Cam Nichols, he, he does do some very, very good reviews. Okay guys, that's where I'm going to leave it. I'll see you next vid. Cheers.